Thanks for listening to Fluff and Crunch, where we talk about the connection and sometimes disconnect between system, setting, and story in tabletop RPGs. We've already gotten a little fired up here talking about politics and garbage like that. So now we're going to talk about something pleasant, right? Star Wars. Star Wars. We're going to talk about Star Wars and your idea of how would you do this with 2D20? Where would we start? Because we're doing that in a separate episode. Well, no, I mean, but this is the lead into it. This is the, 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 the. Remember that when we we did an episode, my goodness, a year and a half ago, something like that, wherein we talked about if you're going to convert an existing setting for a tabletop or take up a property and use it for a tabletop game, there are some things that you need to do first. So we're going to do that first. And then in a future episode, we'll talk about our ideas for the mechanics. Now, before we jump into any of that, I I figure it's worth addressing. You don't think it's worth addressing? No, no, I was, I just carry on. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I think that, uh, I think it's worth addressing the fact that there already is a Star Wars game. So why are we even talking about this? Um, I mean, partly it was Star Wars is the one we started with. This was this was my idea for another idea. Again, like when when we're two years, feels like longer, but it's only two years into this. Podcast. It'll be two years in June, yeah. So when you're two years into a podcast which you're recalling we- weekly, and the company that you mostly bake your output on doesn't release a lot of stuff. <laughs> occasionally you yeah, find it difficult to come up with content yeah. so this was my idea for a new thing right why don't we pick a bunch of properties where we can spend one episode doing what's the most important parts of those properties to turn into if you're doing a role-playing game yes and then do a second episode we turn it into 2d20 so we stick to a non 2d20 and a 2d20 thing and we can just revisit this every yeah. time and i picked star wars because um as i talked about because you like I, it because I like Star Wars, I like but also it a lot. Kind of, despite playing D anD D on this crazy Star Wars, but you know, like literally since having lived in the Star Wars world for a couple of days over Easter, because I was at Galaxy's Edge, woo, um, hence picture, yeah. Um, uh, and since then, all I've done is sort of like yeah, watch Star Wars and read Star Wars and play. That's what I'm playing tonight. I'm playing Star Wars Legion, cool. so everything Star Wars for me at the moment. Um, long may it continue. Except I'm stuck playing this. D campaign for the rest of the year. <laughs> anyway, so back to the rest of there are existing Star Wars games back in the back in the 80s, all the way through till I don't know when, let's say late 90s. Uh there was yeah, West End Games' D6 system, which is very, you know, people still talk about that a lot now, and it was a really good system. But obviously, if you only learned D if you only ever learned, you know, D and D five E existed in the last few years and you've only just learned about role-playing games. You are not going to be easily able to get hold of that. You might be able to find some dodgy. They, a couple of years ago, games. they printed uh, the. Um, oh, they did, yeah. Whoever I forget who owns it, but who they they came out and they printed uh, a. Um, they did a reprint of the the original core book and the source book update, which was you know equipment and stuff like that. And they put it in a nice slip case and they they put the original covers on it. So the the WEG West End Games D six Star Wars is available and then you can find lots of stuff for it on the secondary yeah. market so that's but out there you're not going to be able to easily get it in the shops and you can't no. get like nice fancy pdfs on it but it's actually you know it's a decent system and uh, you know but there are issues with it because it's yep. a you know it's a 40 year old game design um and then there was a then there was a d20 system the first version of which was wizard of the coast wizard of the coast got the the yep. license for a while um because they are like the the disney of uh of tabletop gaming yep um they and the initial version was terrible because they just yes. took sort of third edition D and slapped star wars on it Ooh. um and then they realized very quickly it was bad and then they did a second version called saga which was it's still not perfect but it was better yes it still has problems it still kind of shows of why all, you, should... you know what of all the versions there are there are people who really love the west end d6 version and i think that i, I would count myself among those who have a very strong nostalgia vibe for that original version going back and looking at it now for its time for the late 80s it was a really revolutionary system yeah and it and it 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 fit the it fit the quick resolution and and therefore supported the the action that star wars really needs 
But when you look at it now, it's it's a it's an old system. Like it had great ideas in its time. It was terrific. I think there's a lot better stuff out there now. The D20 version, I agree with you absolutely, is crapola. And that Saga version, which I've never played, I keep hearing that it's it was somewhat like D and D Fourth Edition, but but worked better. Yeah, I mean, it had bits you could see the taken bits out of fourth they took bits of things that would eventually appear in 5e yeah um you know they did a better job of going right we can't just do d20 and slap star wars on it and it'll work because it won't um and it was you know it was better it's still not great but it was it was better um and then fantasy flight got the license and that's what we've had you know technically that's the current system but we've had this weird thing of their release for it was weird. Rather than just releasing Star Wars, they released Edge of the Empire, which was basically smugglers. And yes. then they and then then they released a second line of things, which was Age of Rebellion, which was the Rebellion. And then they released a third line of games, which was Force and Destiny, which was basically playing Jedi's. Now, all of that stuff is still only set in the sort of the for some reason, most of the Star Wars role playing games are set in the time period of right in between New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. That's a three year period, but that's what they kept doing. Now, uh, Saga did give us books for sort of the Old Republic and the legacy stuff, which now is Legend, so it's gone, and some other things. Uh, they have given us books from uh, Fantasy Flight of, I mean, it's like Collapse of the Republic and Dawn of the Empire, but we've still got nothing past. Return of the Jedi, like we know, we don't have a Mandalorian setting book. Right. Um, they did release a starter set for The Force Awakens, but we've got nothing from that time period. So, and at the moment, nothing's happened. There was this big change at Fantasy Flight where uh, Asmodi bought Fantasy Flight and then sort of split off bits of them. So they kind of have given all their miniature stuff to a different company, and they've given all of their role playing stuff to a company called Edge, who I think yep. are based in Spain, but I could be a bit wrong about that. And Edge have now had all the role playing stuff for sort of two years, and they've barely they've like they've done nothing. They've done some reprints for the Star Wars books because they all went yeah. out of print, and that's it. So we've had no new Star Wars books in I don't know three or four years. We've had you know nothing for the other things. But to be honest, so there... it, it seems like uh, it, it. I mean, it kind of seems like a dead system right now it does. I mean, there's, like, there's like nothing, a dead there's, game yeah because, there's, there's nothing coming out for it. yeah there was all this push when the three prequels or not prequels sorry the three uh sequels uh which got progressively worse but that's beside the point when those three movies came out there was a big push and uh and that's when fantasy flight had it and it just feels like since the other star wars movies came out it just has kind of disappeared like i'm looking on edge dash studio.net right now and there's nothing on no, the front just, page no about there is, there is, mentions star wars if oh, you go on to like you know various chat place and reddit and stuff people are like well we don't really know what's happening we know we know fancy flights still have the license which means edge have the license yeah. but they are currently at the moment just getting reprints of the books out there so if you want to play it you can yep yeah they have but, they, and they have the three books the force and destiny age of rebellion age, age edge of uh, edge of the empire and you can click on those and get information about it they have supplements a list of supplements okay great and then they also have a link for the force awakens yeah, uh which is just the start thing so I that's mean, an, yeah that's the adventure that's starter set so yeah it really it doesn't so okay um but yeah so if you wanted to play star wars your place you would really have the, 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 the options aren't great and actually if you want oh i'll, I'll go and drive through and have a look well, Star Wars had this really weird thing that when Fancy Flight got the license, for some stupid reason, into the license that Electronic Arts had for making computer games was that any electrical format Star Wars stuff was Electronic Arts, which meant that Fancy Flight was not able to lease any PDFs. Yeah. So you can't get PDFs of these books. And Fancy Flight have gone all the way through like, this isn't our fault. Now, apparently that license has changed to some extent and we might may eventually may be able to get pdfs but this is still a game system you know this is the game system that came before genesis and genesis yep. came before 2d20 so you're still talking a more than 10 year old game system and it has flaws it could do with a second edition it's quite good but actually if you want to play star wars now you need three core books and each of those core books is probably i like a lot of money i mean they're they like are. 50 well, quid, so they're you probably know, like six i always $70. thought that and you need three I, of them yeah, so we should wrap this this background of it and get to the, our, our essential elements of Star Wars, but I'll well, throw in one last piece for this. that thing. I wonder if Edge Studios is, is 
doing that. I wonder if they're going to make a second edition uh, because you're right. I mean, there are things about the system that uh, I I think that two die twenty does way better in terms of narrative. Like call them narrative dice in loose terms. Two d twenty does a much better job of it than the yeah. those funky dice that that the Star Wars system use. But yeah, I never liked I never liked the three separate rule books. You end up with these. You end up spending a ton of money for redundant page count. Yeah, and um, I don't know. It yeah, I, I was I was excited about it when it first came out because it's Star Wars and I dig Star Wars, and uh, I never I never really liked the system all that much. It it, it grew stale very quickly uh, yeah. when I was I mean, running it. I I I quite like it, but I don't like the fact it's spread over so many books and a lot sure. of books have very little information. And it's one of those properties that still you will see people post on you know Reddit or somewhere. What system should I use for? And people will say, oh, you, everyone suggests their favorite system. You know, fate players suggest fate, Power by the Apocalypse. People go, oh, you could do it in Power by the Apocalypse. You know, so that, and then you'll get the, the Force from Darkness people because you'll get people say, you scum and villainy. Scum and villainy is just Star Wars. And it's like, well, it is if you want to play a smart club. If you want to use it for anything else, it's not going to work. Um, and people will say, you know, Savage Worlds. And this is the thing. People suggest their favorite system. And sure enough, in a week's time, we're going to suggest 2D20 because I think actually... Partly, one of the things that makes it very easy to do in 2D20, although I'm jumping ahead, is that I still am convinced you can convert from Genesis, Star Wars is Genesis, to 2D20 relatively easy. Not not with, you know, not super easy, but relatively easy. All right, so enough of that. So we're going to have a think. So that's what we want to break down. And this is the thing we did. When we did, we did this with Ghostbusters. We said, yes. if, you are con if you are converting a property into a role-playing thing, before you even just get, before you get anywhere near mechanics, mm hmm the things you need to consider is kind of like, right, what are the key bits of the setting and what kind of stories are you going to want to tell? Right. And that's what you need to look at before you ever look at mechanics. Yeah. So that's that's what we're going to have a look at. What are the key, th what, what makes a Star Wars role-playing game a Star Wars role-playing game? And you could say this about TV because apparently lots of people think that Andor uh, is, uh, is Star Wars and my family disagree. So what Sorry. makes Star Wars Star Wars? Yes. Okay. I think that episodic action, maybe that's not necessarily something that's of Star Wars, but it is something that I think we can use to describe Star Wars. Episodic action. And what I mean by that is, you know, look at, um, look at the screen cuts in, there you go in the different Star Wars movies. Look at look at how the Mandalorian is getting, you know, he's one place and then he appears at another planet. You know, we have these cinematic scene cuts and there's action. Yeah, there's intrigue. Yes, there's 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 all kinds of aspects to it you know, in terms of how the stories play out, but there has to be there's got to be action. So you have to have you you're going to have to without getting into talking about system, you're going to have to put aside, okay, I have a need for a system that supports action at the at the table. So that's a big thing. What, what, what about you? What's something that's... So I switch my background to this. Um, to me, a lot of Star Wars is the, is the where you are. Mm. But I like, the, I like this. I like to, you know, so the, the, the classic thing for me, I know this isn't Mos Eisley. This is not the Mos Eisley cantina, but it's really close, which is what you've got. Um, Star Wars for me is always that scene in Star Wars. It's the Mos Eisley cantina. It's the walk-in and there's a bunch of different aliens speaking yeah. different languages and it all looks a bit shady. And then there's some stormtroopers turn up and someone kills someone else shooting first. Yes. Um, which, uh, you know, and no one bats an eyelid. Uh, and then, you know, it's in Empire when there's these bounty hunters and it's that that sense that, you know, it's a big world, it's a big galaxy and there's a lot more, but we're only going to show you a, a little bit of it. And there's, you know, there could be a lot going on, but we don't need to know the whole of that. We don't need it all explained. Um, which is why, you know, part of my issue with the prequels is they felt the need to explain everything. Right. We're going to explain where the force comes from. No, nope, anyway, don't before. need it. Don't want it. So, and, that, and that's, you know, we kind of hinted on this. I think you, you you said something really similar to this a couple of weeks ago, but I can't remember what you were actually talking about. But the idea of like a GM should cut down the amount of exposition. You know, a GM yeah. shouldn't be describing everything. One of the advantages of playing in a Star Wars game is you can kind of, you know, if you... every. Not everyone has seen Star Wars, but you know, there's some weird. Yeah, but it's out. it's pretty 
it's in the cultural backdrop. And yeah. so you're right. In, in terms of like, what does a Star Destroyer look like? Or what does, you know, the inside of a canteen, like those references, those visuals are really easy to communicate. But I think that your idea of this really bustling, diverse, weird galaxy of people and places, that variety, everything doesn't look like, I mean, the, the, uh, uh, a, what would pass for a bar in Star Trek is going to look very different. Things are a lot cleaner. The cl the night cleaning crew is always on duty. Uh, That's in, kind of we kind Star of see pictures. My picture is what Star Wars looks like. Your picture is actually what Star Trek looks like. Yeah, if they you're have right. A lower budget. Yeah, it's That's actually good. that's actually a good point. <laughs> that's actually a good point. Um, okay, so like wild diversity of things and places. Yeah, and I I think that I'll throw this out there too. I think that you need to have, and it doesn't necessarily have to be all the time, but you've got to have star travel because yeah. you have to have access to all those different places. I mean, we you look in any of the movies or any of the series, they're always moving around from place to place. Even if a single character, like for example, when Luke goes to Dagobah in, in uh, uh, Empire Strikes Back, he's there, but there's action taking place in a bunch of other places simultaneously. So you need to have, you need to have star travel, which means yeah. you need to have starships. Yeah, and I think that, it's an awkward one. It's like, you know, well, could you get away without starships if you just travel from place to place and you never have, any, never, ever have starship combat? You could to some extent, but then it doesn't always feel like Star Wars. Or worst case scenario, it feels like that last Jedi bit where the Star Destroyers are chasing the good guys. And that's the, the plot of the film is that we, we can't go to light speed, so we're going to travel at this speed and we just... Uh... Again, Austin Powers scene where, where he's got the, 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 the roller thing and the dude's in front of him going, ah, running. Terrible, terrible movie. Uh, I mean, Horrible. I, I, I don't know why someone thought that will be good cinematically. Because they were uh, Let's know, have the know. slowest car chase of all time. I mean, the fact that people left the ship to go and do something to come I back. I don't to think. That... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure that they were actually trying to make a movie. I think they were more trying to make a PSA. But that's beside the point. Uh, I, so yeah, star tra star travel is important, and, and not only that, yes. I think you do need starship combat, which I means absolutely you then do. have to be able to have you, you have to have something that can and do it, that. It has to be on the small scale. Yes, I mean having it's not like giant fleet level things where you know you're playing a role on a ship. No, you're flying the ship. You're flying a fighter, yeah. or you're one of four or five people on a small freighter. Or yeah, something if, like that. Yeah. If you wanted to represent fleet scale combat, which because obviously it does happen in Star Wars, I I would have a separate set of rules, which is a very top level. You know, think think June. Yeah. Think one of the things we like about June. Okay, we don't understand some of it, but we really like the idea that if it's two guys fighting, there's a set of rules for that, and if it's two squads fighting or like a normal skirmish, it's this. But if it's yeah. two, uh, if it's two armies fighting, it's a different set of rules. Um, that that you know that you want that you don't want to have. Yeah, you want you want something yeah. like that. You want rules, so right, we're in our we're in the Millennium Falcon and we're fighting four Tie fighters, and and we can do that, or we can do. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on, but actually, I mean, do, you know, does it matter if you're that again? If you're that one thing, you know, if you're if you're Wedge in Return of the Jedi, it doesn't really matter what's going on between them. You're just going to have a couple of cool little moments for you. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. We don't really care about it. Yes, we know there was a bunch of big ships fighting a bunch of big other ships. Do we really care about what was happening? No, it was it was background. Yeah. It was kind of like, you know, that was in the background. That was cool. And what really mattered was was what Lando was doing on the Millennium Falcon yeah. because need, the rest of it is You irrelevant. need starship combat and starship operations at the character level. That's yeah. where the emphasis of it needs to be. And I think that's important. So whereas Very. Star Trek, obviously, is it's big scale. You are on a big ship yep. with a crew of people flying, you know, doing everything on that thing. And you need a set of rules that does that. Star Wars shouldn't be that. It should be, no. you know, pilot and gunner. Yep. And, at the, and that's at the character level. Yeah, character level. I'll throw out the really obvious thing. You need to have the force. Which is such a complicating factor. I, I think that you could successfully run a star wars game and have no force show up you, you yes or that's or why i would add to you is that you don't have to have rules for the pcs to use the force 
but you do need to have the force being somewhere. Yes. Because so you need the, you know, if you're, if you're going to say to your players, look, none of you are Jedi, that's fine. But then there should still be force users. You should still have inquisitors or Darth yeah. Vader or, you know, your Grogu. At least it's mentioned. Yoda. Yeah. It, it should still be in the background. You don't have to have, I mean, I would still argue a lot of the time that Star Wars is better when the force is mysterious and there's not a lot and it's in the background. And even when, you know, even in the original trilogy, when the, when it's put in your face, you know, Yoda's yeah. an NPC. Yes, Luke's a main character, but he's bumbling his way through. Luke doesn't show any kind of use of the force until parts of Return of the Jedi. And even then, like the Emperor's like, you're a punk. You don't know anything about the force. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you I don't think you have to have rules. And certainly unless you're if I was doing a system for this, I might well go, right, look, guys, I, I want to do a more smugly thing. Um, or a more thing none of you are going to be jedi if none of the players are going to be jedi you do not have to have rules mm. player rules for the force but right. you need something in the background you know which is, which is fine you write it into the character things that and then you don't need to it just needs to be an ability that a bad guy has you don't have to worry about it but there should there should be the force yes ideally it would be a player thing but well i i don't know i mean i i you and i have talked about this before that that the force is one of those things as a set of rules that threatens to break Star Wars. It, yeah. You know, it, it... well, people moan about paladins in D&D &D because our oh, paladins, are, they, they, they have heavy armor and they can do all the weapons and they're really charismatic and, you know, and they can do all these spells as well. That's what Jedi are. Jedi are paladins. They are going to mess up your system. Now, if everybody is a paladin, God, that's an awful thought. But if mm. everyone's a Jedi, I think you're okay. I think when you try mixing it up, you know, that it gets awkward because again, it's the paladin in the party. Yeah. The rogue wants to go and steal something and the paladins, you can't do that. Well, Jedi, Jedi aren't just rules. Jedi are also like a code you need to live by. This is when you maybe then want to think about a different time period. And again, if you're playing, you know, uh, the standard during the dark, you know, during the empire period and someone wants to play a Jedi, you've got problems because, yeah. well, your character is literally walking illegal. If that person uses the force, yeah. they're going to have bounty hunters after them. The empire's going to be after them. How how does that work? The whole rest of the party are like, oh, cheers, dude. We're going to forget about everything we were doing yeah. because now we've got to run away. So I think if you, again, that comes into sort of the, the the story or the setting of it. You do occasionally have to, right, if everyone says, I want to play a Jedi, right, well, let's go back to this, right. this High Republic period, which is they're writing about at the moment. Yeah. We'll get a TV show for next year or go. Whatever. There isn't yeah, another I mean, period where we have a lot. Of I, I think that I think that my my point though about there's got to be the force. What that actually means and how it plays out, how you play it out as part of the story and part of the rules, that's a whole set of other questions. But I think yeah. that the the force has got to be there in some way or another. What else have you got? What's another essential element of Star Wars? I think you have to be. I mean, I've got, I've kind of hinted this, but I haven't specifically explained. Like, you have to be clear, and I think you need to decide at which time period are you playing in, because everyone we've seen yeah. so far always starts off with this: we're going to go in between New Hope and Empire. If you're doing that, you then have to have a thought of right: what time period are we setting in, and are we or are we? This is more of a when you're running it as opposed to the system you use, but are we? Are we not going to overlap with what's happening? In other words, what I mean is like, right, if we start after a new hope, because that's the standard, after four years, are we going to have, you know, we play for ages and we're playing in a certain time. Span. What happens when the, uh, you know, uh, Wedge and Lando blow up the, the second Death Star and kill the Emperor? Do we then go from there or are we going to do that? And what happens if our play are our players going to be able to join the rebellion and do that? Are, what happens if we kill? and solo or luke in between the second between the first and the third film are we then going to do a what if thing so i think that's something we've mentioned this in the past in, in different episodes you need to have that conversation of right what time period are we set in and are we going to have canon be fixed or are we going to play with that that's more of a when you started playing as yeah. opposed to a rules thing but it is something you need to consider yeah my last thing I'm going to throw in that I can think of right now that I thought of, and maybe you'll jog my memory of something else, but I think that the an essential element of any Star Wars game is the Empire. Or, or something that either points toward it or is the result of it based on time period. For me, one of the, one of the things that makes, I mean, if, let me back up. 
if Star Wars is just googly eyed aliens on strange alien vistas and you're, you know, buying and selling stuff or bounty hunting people, I mean, really, there's, I don't, you know, aside from, okay, there's a, there's this alien or that alien, there's a, you know, whatever, you know, the, oh, you, oh yeah, you recognize that from the movie and in your mind, you tell yourself, oh, this feels like Star Wars because there's, you know, there's one of the, what is it, the Trandoshan or what the hell is it? Well, I forget what the, what's the alien that Greedo is? Uh, Rodian. Right, Rodians. That was my first Star Wars action figure. I have no idea why. My first <laughs> Star Wars action figure was Greedo. What, that, what was I thinking? Anyway, beside the point. I can't remember what my first one was. It was That's Greedo. funny. I know what my first G.I. Joe figure was, but I have no idea what my first Star Wars figure was. My first G.I. Joe figure uh, of the, the last string from the very early 80s was um, Rock and Roll, the Machine Gunner. You see, here it was funny because ours were called Action Force. This is now a whole different conversation. But I, I had Barbecue. That was my first ever one. Barbecue. Okay, yeah, right on. Firefight. Anyway, um, anyway um, I, I think yeah, I, I think, think about the empires. There's got to be, there's got to be that big bad motive force that either is trying to muscle in, manipulate, or you're fighting back against. Like I think that that takes all of your bounty hunting and smuggling and exploring, and it 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 gives it it puts it in context because of the light or the shadow if you want to say that that the yeah. empire or the sith or the the new the the whatever what the hell the first order or whatever the hell it's called this week shines on it it changes the first order that guy was horrible anyway that guy was a freaking awful character sorry <laughs> horrible um, um. No, I agree. I was going to say, I don't, you don't have to. Think, I think you need, it works better when there is a bad guy because you can go all the way back to the old Republic and then you have like, there's a Sith Empire. So it's yeah. doubly bad because it's like the Empire yeah. and the Sith. Um, and I think then when you go like far ahead, like when they did Legacy, again, you had like a Sith Empire. That was great. If you put the Sith and the Empire next to each other, great. But you want people like, people with red lightsabers are clearly baddies and yeah. people in white armor, are clear, or red armor, whatever, they're clearly baddies. Again, I mean, the first, that was the one thing it, Okay, they changed the name, but they were sensible enough to go, right, we have to have stormtroopers being the bad guys. Why they changed it? They could have just called it the, the Empire again. No one would have cared, but, you know, they called it something stupid. But at least then we have clear bad guys. Everyone knows a stormtrooper's a bad guy. Um, yeah, one of the things the prequels is a bit weird is in the first film, there's no bad guy. Because right. there's no separatist then. There's, there's droids, but it wasn't clear who the bad guy was. Now, by the second film, you, they introduced the separatists. Okay, at least you had yep. a name on it. Um, you know, of course, if you look behind it, you have this whole weird thing of like, right. So on the one hand, you've got the separatists who are run by Palpatine. And on the other hand, you've got the Republic who's ruled by Pal. What? Wait, those, one dude's fighting those, both let, sides let, of the army. I, I can hey, resolve, I Jeez. can solve my Star Wars problems by just ignoring those three movies entirely. The third film was good. I, no. It was, Revenge, of the, Revenge of the Sith. All right, apart from that bit. But most of Revenge of the Sith, oh, oh, most so of Revenge bad. of the Sith, very good. The trouble so is, is bad. that yeah, but we had to watch through two. It's like so, oh. Annie has said, "Can we watch the prequels?" And I've looked and, at Meek, and Meek has gone, "No." no. So I've got to watch them. After. And again and again, we see the 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 moral weakness of Obi Wan Kenobi. The blood of the galaxy is on him because he didn't have the moral fortitude to do what needed to be done in the moment, which was dice up Anakin Skywalker into little bits and pieces. But anyway, that's beside the point. You're right. Um, there, needs yeah, there, need, there, there needs to be a clear and obvious bad guy. And even in like the Mandalorian has shown that even when we know that it's it's like almost an underground empire, it's still there. Yeah. It's still there in the shadows. Yeah. Because it's, again, you can do this thing because it's a big galaxy and you can go, okay, well, on this planet, yeah. the empire is still there. Yeah. Um, and Which that, makes sense. That works. Okay, yes, it there's totally a new republic, sense. but it makes it quite, well, the new republic is a bit naff, really and has no real backbone and is stuck in politics. But the empire is still there doing empire type things. Yeah. And we know that the empire is eventually going to become sort of the first order. But we still have stormtroopers that wear white. Right. And the big bad guys still wear black. And, you know, and, you know, ideally the Sith are still there. And I, I mean, why at some point? Uh, I'll, I'll throw this in there. You said there has to be a bad guy. I think it, 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 it there can be individual characters that are like the avatars of the badness but that 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 bad guy thing has to be an entity it has to be a movement and yeah. i think the empire counts as that and this underground empire that we see the resurgent you know thrawn coming back in yeah. the ahsoka series 
all that fits it perfectly. Yeah, me too. I think, again, if you remove that completely, and this is where I initially, I never really connected that well story-wise with Edge of the Empire as a setting from FFG because it, it seemed to put the Empire so far in the background that it that it, it just lost, it was just like Traveler with more guns and like more crime it just it didn't feel like star wars without that that threat being there and i know you could run it that way but anyway well i still like that because you know i i like you know for me a lot of the star wars is sort of smugglers and you know smugglers uh and bounty hunters yeah and cool aliens but i like to have the stormtroopers in the background yeah because that's the good threat you know who, if you do something illegal who's going to sort you out well these, there's going to be stormtroopers there and despite the fact that yes we all joke that stormtroopers are absolutely completely inept and can't shoot anything yeah on paper they're meant to be better yeah. than that um just, what else you know, what else is there anything else that we're saying if you don't have these things or don't have this combination of things i just thought of one Wars. droids oh yeah because droids. again you don't have to have playable droids um, but the only characters that are present in all of the Star Wars films, apart from Solo, is is R two D two and, and C three PO. They are, you know, they're they're always there. So droids is, you know, droids is an important part yeah. of of story Star element. Wars. It's a good point. Um, you know, if I had a player that says I want to play an astromech, I'd say no, right, because that's dumb. But if you want to play a protocol droid, that's I dumb. mean, this is it's very, that's worse. It is, but so. <laughs> The comic I'm reading at the moment, which is Dr. Afra, who is like the best character that's only in the comics and has to make the thing to live action at some point. But she, for a good chunk of her run, has a, basically a ripoff of C-3PO and R2-D2. But the, the C-3PO in it has no morals and all he wants to do is kill people. And he has like his knives, his fingers turn into knives and he's just a straight up psychopath. That's cool. Um, so he's a really cool character because all he, he, you know, you know, he gets upset if she won't let him kill people and doesn't understand why it's wrong because something's gone wrong in his thing. And he, so he has, he has like no ethics or morals. So he's just, he's a psychopath. Yeah. And then the droid is just this like walking artillery machine that just wants to blow everything up and has like flamethrowers and rocket launchers just sprout out of it. So they're funny, but again, you wouldn't let them be players. They're like two, two chaotic evil characters. So yeah, yeah. you still wouldn't let them. But so you, you, you know, IG-88 or IG-11 in Mandalorian, that's a cool character. I think, you know, whether whether you allow it to be playable or not, you're right. They're, they're, that's part of the backdrop. And it also is, from a mechanical and story standpoint, it, it would enable you to flesh out a party to provide for like, well, how do we do maintenance? On, there's only three of us on this ship. How do we actually take care of all? Oh, we have droids. Oh, okay. Yeah. That becomes a, that becomes an important piece. Good. Yeah. Good point. There have to be droids. Um, anything else? Most of it. Cause it's kind of like, you know, aliens, droids, the force. And obviously with the force comes lightsabers. We didn't say lightsabers, but lightsabers are a whole problem. Their own thing. Cause you know, is, mm. is this the, the lightsabers that, in the films can cut through everything and do everything or is this the lightsabers when you play a computer game that's useless yeah. i get so frustrated when i'm playing the computer game play at the moment i'm like okay i just i hit this guy with my lightsaber and he's still sounded he's not wearing yeah. some fancy cool no. beskar armor that mandalorians have it's just a dude why is the you dude know, something i'll throw this out there about beskar armor how is it that it i mean the plates don't even cover like a third or a quarter of the person. How come all the shots only and always hit the best car? So, I have you oh, this is a spot. have you seen the have you seen all of season three now? We have one episode left, and there oh, might so be you're... people out there who haven't watched it. So, no spoilers. But we watched up to the point where uh, I'll I'll talk about afterwards. But the, yes. the short version: there are various things that you can watch in various Star Wars things where you will see people deliberately shooting between the plates. So that is an acknowledged thing. Okay. Yeah, a lot of the time, unfortunately, okay. Mandalorians do seem to get hit in the plate. Django oh, didn't get hit in the plate. That's true. Mace Window. That's a, that's Mace a good Window point. saw that big ass gap between the helmet and his armor, and he went for it. Yeah, that's a good point. That's why Boba doesn't have a daddy. Well, you know what I mean. Um, um, okay. So is um, there? But is there? Is there anything else? Or anything else that we say must be in Star Wars? No, I think that's kind of the, the key things. Yeah, that you know, droids, droids and aliens. 
the empire and someone to be against the empire you yeah know, smugglers and bounty hunters uh yeah cool locations which and uh, one of those things about locations apparently all planets only have one terrain on the entire planet. right that makes it convenient <laughs> um, oh here actually you know what i'll throw this out there and the i think the assumption that characters characters are heroes or jaded heroes but they are heroes uh you, you don't get you you don't get the the protagonists in star wars are their hero they are the good guys there's no hey let's play neutral evil characters in our D D campaign there's nothing no, i think like there's that. yeah I mean, if you watch through the clone wars you have the odd redeemed character like as arguably asaji ventress is like starts off straight sure. off evil sure, and then no, no. slowly and redemption stories more. we love those but um but you but wouldn't have her as a person, playable character. So. That person gets redeemed to be a hero. They're like tarnished because yeah. of their background. But yeah, I think it very. I mean, the idea of Star Wars is meant to be, you know, light versus black. It's meant to be good versus yes. evil. Okay, we're starting to see more of these characters that are trying to be a more nuanced take on the Force. Like, okay, I'd say Ray, but other people would disagree. But like Ahsoka, Ahsoka says, "I'm not a Jedi. I'm not light or dark. Yeah. I'm in the middle." But you know, that's one character in a ton of, you know good or evil um yeah it'd be nice if the jedi started moving away from this really good or really and i'll keep the evil the evil guys are fun um we like evil bad guys but uh, uh no i think i think you're absolutely right you know star wars is one of those properties where you have heroes and villains yeah um because that's that's but and if everything yeah. is gray and brooding it loses the contrast that is essential to uh to star wars no, I've become something that it's not. Yeah. All right. So now we got to think about how we can uh, how we can port those things into two D twenty, and we'll do that in another episode. We'll do that in another episode. Thank you so much for listening. You can visit our show's homepage at anchor.fm slash fluff and crunch that's f-l-u-f-f-n-c-r-u-n-c-h we would really appreciate feedback and reviews on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to this on thanks so much